Hey guys, what's up? This is Brad from Velveteen Audio, and uh, today I'm gonna do a little bit of a tutorial on how I set up my parallel compression in my mixes. Um, I'm not going to really go over too much about what settings to use on your compressors uh, or, or what gain reduction level you're aiming for. I just wanna show you some setup um, with hopes that it uh, it gives you some creative ideas for how you can apply it in your mixes and uh, just show you some of the ways you can maybe make it a little bit easier and allow you to be a bit more creative with it when you do get to your mixing stages. Um, and even within tracking too, it can be part of the sound. Um, so anyways, this is a track that I am actually releasing as an artist um, in the fall. I, I did take the vocals out so I could leave at least a little bit of mystery so that it's not a, a pre-release or anything like that. But I will, uh, I will share the instrumental and uh, kind of show you what, uh, what this sounds like. So I'm just going to play it from the top. Maybe we'll just listen up to the chorus and we can see how this song develops and, and whatnot. So... Kind of some, you know, really ambient, kind of classic 80s synths. Um, blending that with some modern pop drum production once we get to the chorus. And uh, I've got some kind of a bluesy kind of Strat, Fender Strat sound on a guitar. Kind of following the, the main hook, which you'll hear in a second. So that's uh, that's the track so far. Um, now let's let's dive into some of the places we might want to use parallel compression. So I really like using parallel compression on my shells. Let's call it of the kit, um, the kick, snare, toms. This particular track is is an is a synthetic kit, so maybe that doesn't really translate. But uh, basically, here we have kick, snare. Um, we've got some percussion up here that we'll we'll do some parallel compression with later, but um, these are some of the more individual elements that I like to use parallel compression on. So um, I've kind of got this all pre-routed. Um, you might, in most cases, have various kick channels. Like maybe you'll have, a, if it's a real kit, you might have, let's say, a kick in mic and an out mic. Uh, you may have more than that. Um, you may have some samples. If it's an electronic production, I mean, a lot of times you'll see like six, seven kick drums here that come in and out. Uh, in this case, I have already printed down a lot of my stuff into this kick channel, and I've printed down a few impact hits into this channel. So these two are going to be running to my kick bus. So what happens here is you'll see that each of these channels run to a bus called the kick bus, and that sends to this channel here. What I do is I then use a send that is pre-fader at unity or zero, and send that to a kick crush, which is my parallel compression. Uh, the reason I do it in series like that is because um, I like to do my EQ moves or whatever processing I want to do on the bus, and I want to have that processing go to the the crush channel without having to copy anything. Um, that's not to say you you necessarily want the the parallel channel to sound exactly the same, but I find myself uh, if I if I let's say monitored this channel and this channel on the kick bus, so they're both receiving it directly from these channels, I would find myself copying it like that, um, which is just you know one more step. So I uh, just simply run them in series, and I don't find that there's any phase issues or anything like that. Uh, it seems to work for my process. So. Now you'll see that that's how I set up most of my parallel compression. Uh, I like to start at about minus 18 so that it's, uh, you know, just kind of hinting at it maybe. It might not even be adding anything just yet. Um, it's a good starting point anyway, so it's not uh, anything over, over the top. So same thing with the snare. Um, again, I've printed this down from quite a few channels. Uh, this is kind of an extra sample, but the, both of those are running to a snare bus. SN bus is my way of uh, shortening that name, so... Um, again, I just have a EQ up here 
and I'm going to be sending to the snare crush channel, which is my parallel compression. Everything's the same as the as the kick channel. Um, none of neither of these have are, are necessarily the plugins I would use. They are just placeholders to show you um, what I would be doing. So uh, in terms of uh, level setting, you do need to watch that your your levels are are appropriate. So let me go to a section where we've got some kick and snare. So let's go to maybe second chorus so it's a bit longer. Okay, uh, seems like we're getting a bit laggy there, but uh, we can see that the kick crush channel is not quite at the same level as the kick bus. So um, you can do that with various ways, but I'm just gonna use the output of this 1176 I have up. Just crank it up a little bit. So you're just just kind of looking for these two meters to roughly be at the same level. I'm not super scientific about it. I just want to see that they're kind of hovering around the same uh, uh, same level. Um, you can use various meters here if you'd like. Uh, PPM DIN is a good one for really dynamic instruments. Um, I'm very used to looking at sample peak over the years, so that's kind of a bit of a, a crutch for me. Um, and yeah, let's check the same thing on the snare. Those actually look pretty good. So at that point, uh, they're level matched. I see there's a bit of gain reduction happening. There's some crazy sub bass happening there. So yeah, at that point, we've got a, a little bit of compression uh, on each, and we're there at minus 18. One last step I do with almost all of my channels is I set up a VCA that allows me to adjust the volume of them, but I still have access to the individual ones. So if you have any experience with VCAs in Pro Tools, it's a really handy feature. Um, allows you to have the group off, but still control it like a group. So I've had them muted right now. You'll see that these mute buttons were uh, kind of engaged and now they're off. So now the, the crushes are actually in. And out. Back in. I'm noticing it a little bit on the kick. Uh, it's giving it a bit more attack. Let's bring both of them up quite a bit just to show you what happens. Uh, actually, I'll do this as it's playing. So by the end there, the kick uh, is uh, is pretty loud. So um, that's how you do it. And then within each one, if you're saying, like, well, for instance, myself, I was just saying that the kick crush channel was getting a little loud, causing the kick to be uh, a little overbearing. So we could maybe um, get, let, let's say we liked it there, and then we could keep going with the snare if we wanted. So, um, And if you're, you want to really hear the difference it's making, you can just go back and forth and audition them and just make sure that they're actually adding something to the sound. So um, so yeah, that's, that's what I usually do on the drums. I would normally do it on the toms as well, but uh, again, no toms in this track, so just kick and snare for this one. Uh, I don't do it on the cymbals because I, I just it never works for my process. Maybe I haven't figured out a, a smooth way to do it, but it all it always ends up sounding kind of cheap. So moving on, the, that's really the only instrument that I don't do it on the overall bus. The reason is I don't like it on the cymbals, so I do it with the shells individually, and then I send the shells to the drum crush here. So this is where I have all my, essentially my uh, subgroup buses, and... Uh, and yeah, they're, you can see they're all kind of laid out with the same method. So I've got drums, percussion, bass, guitars, synths, vocals, uh, and effects. Effects is just what I call like verbs and delays, anything in this yellow section here. Uh, I usually don't do a whole lot of parallel compression there, but uh, it's set up for it. Sometimes it can be interesting for uh, reverbs to react in kind of weird ways and uh, off of a uh, parallel compression. So um, yeah, you'll see the same thing. So um, with the exception of this channel, all of these channels will be, um, the percussion will, all the tracks will come into this percussion bus, or perk bus, I have it labeled. And then it will go pre-fader out of this send to the uh, crush channel. Um, all the principles are really the same here. Um, 
let me just throw on some, uh, maybe I'll just throw on that 1176 on everything so that you can just kind of see what I'm doing. Um, no need to do any, any EQ or anything like that. Let's just pull up the blue stripe since it's at the top. Yes, we want to change that. Okay, and I'm just going to leave them at the standard setting right now, so... Okay, again, they're all at minus 18. Everything is good. Um, again, I would go through each of these uh, instruments. I would probably um, find some compressors that I like, so I would audition a few different ones to see what's really adding to the sound and play around a bit and uh, play with the levels of each of them. And uh, But for the sake of argument, I'm just going to... We just got 1176 across all of them, and I'm not going to level check. The other, the last step I'm doing is each of these subgroups I send to an overall mix crush. So that's, everything's in here, uh, and we're giving it, the whole mix, a bit of a parallel compression. So once again, I'm starting all of these at minus 18, and they all go to this VCA called Crushes uh, that allows me to turn them on and off so I can audition real quick. I can adjust the whole group. If I want more or less of everything, I can still in, uh, adjust individuals. So let's say, I don't know, let's say I just need more drum energy. I just crank that up. Or maybe the synths, I just want to feel a little more pressure. Or maybe the vocals, I want a little more stability. I want the them to be leveled out a bit. I can bring that up as well. And if I just want a little bit more energy on the entire mix, well, this mix crush can go up and, uh, and whatnot. And, you know... It's, uh, like I said, you can use this VCA right here to play with all of it together as well, as well as just um, muting and unmuting so that you can actually hear what it's doing rather than uh, just assuming it's better. You know, you actually get to hear the difference. Um, so yeah, the you'll see all the mix crushes are, are pre-fader sent, and that includes the individual crush channels. Um, so these are all the parallel buses for the groups. Those all go to the mix crush. You don't have to. You could just do the buses themselves. And you certainly do not have to use all these channels. I like to have everything set up so that I have options. Let's say, man, I'm really not digging the way the parallel, any parallel is working on the percussion. Mute. Done. Or volume off. Uh, but at least I have it set up there so I, I can get creative and play around to see if it's, if it's working. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty well it. Um, and then at the end of, end of the mix, everything goes in through my mix bus, and then I have my output section here. So yeah, just a, I guess a quick, uh, a quick kind of recap. I like to do parallel compression on the, the shells, in this case, kick and snare. I do all my uh, parallel compression using an auxiliary track on the side, and I run them in series, so into whatever it is, let's say in snare in this case, do my processing and then go to the parallel bus. Uh, I have a VCA set up so that I can quickly turn any parallel compression off uh, or just go back and forth and check how it sounds as well as control the volume. And I like to just have the option and I have these all built into my template so that uh, it's quick access and it allows me to Bring a little bit of energy, a little bit more energy to the mixes, and uh, and yeah, get to get something happening. Let's uh, let's do a little playback and just show you what what these sound like. Maybe I'll just play with the VCA and just uh, bring uh, bring those in and out. Okay, so obviously there you can see that the mix is getting real squishy. Um, part of that probably is I have my mix bus uh, set up for a bit of lower of a volume. When you do bring in all this parallel compression, it is going to increase the volume. So you're going to have to deal with that downstream, which would be here on the mix bus for me. But I felt like that was just a, getting a bit muddy, a bit squishy. So I would probably bring it back maybe uh, around here. I don't know what that... Uh, there's a there's a there's a bass drop somewhere in my mix here that I uh, that is really crushing the mix, but uh, so maybe that would be something I would deal with outside of the parallel compression. But anyway, let's just play back past that. It's 
definitely a bit more air without them in. And now having said that, it uh, you know it it's not to say that these are all set properly. Again, some of them are not even running. Um, guitar crush, guitar crush. I may have set this up twice because I uh, yes, yeah, see, I just have two buses running because I uh, imported this off of my template twice. So um, so yeah, that's why those aren't running. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. And uh, maybe in the next video, we'll talk about ways to set up the compressors and what kind of sounds you're looking for and some ideas for um, which particular types of sounds are good with certain compressors, etc. But I think this is a great workflow uh, to give you the option and uh, allow you to be really creative with, uh, with the parallel compression quickly. So um, if you do want access to this template, we do have it on our website. Uh, it's a free download. Um, there's, there's definitely more things on it as this has been modified to, to uh, this particular song. But um, if you do want to check out this template, it'll kind of have a lot of these things pre-set up. Uh, I don't think we have really any specific compression set up per channel because you know everyone's got all kinds of different plugins, but it at least gives you idea an idea of how the routing looks uh, in our in our setup, and uh, how maybe you can draw some inspiration from that. So, anyways, um, I think that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're liking these videos, please uh, please give us a like. Please comment. Please uh, engage with us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, give us a subscribe uh, wherever you're listening. If it's uh, on Facebook, maybe a like. Uh, or a follow and if it's on YouTube and uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll get you another video ASAP and uh, yeah happy mixing